here we are again, me, you, and JavaScript. And today I would like to continue talking about the shopping cart, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to go back and reflect on all of the code that we wrote in the last few videos and, uh, you know, kind of consider it and think about, you know, how does it fit in the bigger picture of, you know, a project that might actually use it, right? And, you know, this is in the context of the shopping cart, but actually, you know, that this is also, you know, the way you would look at any JavaScript or any, you know, web project that was going to use JavaScript in, you know, you know, in that website or, you know, mobile web application thing that you were making, right? Um, so here we are, and I've, what I've done is I, I've looked through the code that we've written here, and what I did was I, I wrote down all of the functions and variables that we used, okay? And so, you know, I've got this display cart function, and I kind of consider this one apart from the, the cart stuff. So, so all of these down here belong to the shopping cart system, and this one maybe is separate from that. You know, we might include some of this or incorporate it into the cart in the future. Um, but, you know, these are all the functions that we have. And then there's one variable here called cart array. Okay, so cart array is one variable. And actually, you know, this item thing is an object class thing, right? This is a this is sort of our template that we use to build item objects. Okay, so this is kind of a variable. But then all these other guys here, you know, add item to cart, remove item from cart, remove item from cart all, clear cart, count cart, total cart, list cart, save cart, load cart, right? And these are all functions that we wrote. Okay, and we use them to do various things with our shopping cart. Okay, um, now let's think about this. You know, in, in JavaScript, if you create a script and you name a variable or you name a function, then that function or variable is sort of globally available throughout your entire JavaScript program. Okay? It doesn't matter where you put it. You could put it in another file. You could put it in another script tag. You could put it somewhere else in the same script. You could put it, you know, just about anywhere, and it would be a global item, okay? I'm going to delete that thing, and we'll talk about that in a moment, right? Um, and that actually is kind of nice, you know, on a naive level, right, where you think like, oh, you know, I, I define this cart thing, and I can just access it anywhere, and it's very easy for me to get to that item, you know, how convenient. But in the larger picture, it becomes sort of a liability because, you know, you might define, let's say, a script tag up here. I'll put another script tag there. And let's imagine this script tag could be anywhere, right? Maybe it was even written by someone else. We didn't write it, so we don't even know what's in here. It's mysterious, right? Um, and it may be in a place where we don't see because maybe we're importing this script from somewhere else, right? So it's in another file that we haven't even looked at because someone just said, oh, this is a great li JavaScript library. Import it and use it, right? But let's imagine in here someone defined a variable called cart. Whoa. Or maybe they defined a variable called item. Or maybe they defined both of these, right? And so, you know, we run our script and all of a sudden cart, you know, kind of works sometimes and then other times it's turning into a strange value that doesn't work and our program is throwing a bunch of errors. And it's because, you know, we define the variable here, but then, you know, this other script is overwriting our variable or we're overwriting the variable from the other script and we don't know that, that we happen to be using the same name, right? So um, that's a problem. And we could, we could, you know, do that here and make this kind of not work the way that it's supposed to work, right? You know, but, uh, you know, I won't go through an example of that. Take my word for it. It'll happen, right? So, you know, if, if you define a variable in JavaScript, it's essentially global to the entire program. So, you know, how do, how do we deal with that, right? So what we're going to do is this, right? And this is kind of a strategy that a lot of people work, and we'll refine this in the future, but we're going to just start here, okay? What we'd like to do is maybe we'd like our shopping cart system to just use one variable, and that way we can give it a name that we're, we're pretty sure will be unique, okay? 
And then all of the parts, all of the functions and variables and, and other features you know, that store data are all going to be inside this one variable. So we have this namespace, essentially, that belongs to us. Okay, So let's imagine you know, we wanted to work with our shopping cart, and we wanted to make a variable called shopping cart. Okay, now that one might be a little too generic, but let's say I had a, I have a website called Web Devils, right? So maybe I want to make WD for Web Devils. I'll do Web Devils Shopping Cart, right? And maybe this name is pretty unique. I know that no one else is going to use it. So there's only one name that I need to use. And then what I want to do is I want to make this an object, okay? And as you recall, you know, objects can store properties. So I'm just going to mock this up here. I'm not going to finish writing it. We'll maybe do that in the next video, right? But uh, just to keep things short right now. But imagine, you know, I started with this, right? And what I want to do is I want to say, okay, you know, this shopping cart object, it needs to have, you know, a cart and an item built into it. And then it needs to have all these other functions. So what I might do is I might say, you know, shopping cart dot, you know, cart equals, you know, an, an empty array. And then I could say, you know, WD shopping cart dot item equals, you know, a function with all of the features that we put in our other function, right? And then I could say, you know, WD shopping cart equals, you know, a function um, called, let's say, you know, add item to cart. And then we can say this is equal to a function right so in this way we could create one variable that was an object and then inside that object we could assign properties and functions or methods right okay and all of them would be stored in one place under one name okay because remember you know these names that belong to this property they can't be overwritten unless we you know overwrite this one so as long as no one else is using the name wd shopping cart then everything in here the names you know in here don't matter okay and again you you can do that so if you make a if you make a variable that is an object i'll just do a simple one here object you can just make an empty object and you can add properties to it like this <clears throat> We can say dot name equals some value like Joe. And if you want to assign a function, so if you want to put a function into an object, you can, you know, say um, object dot, you know, my function equals, and then we can define a function here. And in JavaScript, functions represent values, right? So a function itself can be a value. And that's actually a very, really interesting concept in JavaScript, okay? So here you can see we've got a value. We say, you know, name equals a value. And the value here might be a, a name, right, or a string. And we could do, you know, age. And maybe age is a number, right, like 33. And then down here on the third one, we say, you know, object dot some name, right, like, you know, do something, right? So let's spell it right. I can say do something is my function name. And then I can say equals a function. Okay, and so that's like a really important idea. Okay, a function can be a value. Okay, just let that sink in for a minute. Okay, and we'll, we'll end the video on this, right? But this, this would be a function that was a value. And of course, you know, you would you know, put all of your code here for the function, and you could put any parameters that your function might take. So maybe, you know, your function does something, and this is the thing that it does, and the count is maybe how many times it does that thing, okay? You know, of course, when we do ours, when we do an add item to cart, we'll have to include the name, price, and count, right, for the, for the item that we'll add, right? But, you know, here in this example, I just made two parameters. Okay, so, so there's, your, there's your lesson for today, right? So, one, um, all variables are global, so they're accessible throughout the entire program. That becomes a problem. It's good for us to maybe consolidate all of our variables and functions into an object so that we only have one name to deal with, and that you know, doesn't clutter the JavaScript space with, 
you know, lots of names where we could run into problems. And then two, you can attach um, all of the values to your object and a function itself can be a value. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope that um, gets everybody thinking and is useful information for people to know. Thanks.